Hi there, I'm Andy Munitz, Professional Audio Product Manager for Sony, and thanks for joining me today. Today we are doing a presentation and I am really socially distancing. So, I thought I'd start out by giving you a quick little brief history of Sony in the audio business. Many of you may know that the name Sony is derived from the Latin word sonus for sound. And our very first product as a company in 1950 was a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. But if you think about it, what good is a tape recorder unless it's got an input device? So of course, we built our very first microphone back in the early 1950s. We built our first wireless microphone in the early 1960s. And every generation that we came out with, we added features and improved things. And today, I'm talking to you on our latest generation, DWX True Digital Wireless System. As a matter of fact, uh, we introduced DWX all the way back in 2009. So we've been in the True Digital Wireless microphone business as long about as anybody out there. As a matter of fact, we sell thousands of channels of digital wireless into the broadcast and the ENG world. But actually, it's your world of location sound that I'm very, very interested in because, quite honestly, you guys listen for a living. In broadcast, you know, the meters are moving, you got the idea, and leave it up to the editor to play with. But you listen for a living all day long, and you can actually hear the sound quality. You can hear differences in sound, and our engineers try incredibly hard to absolutely give our DWX system and you the best quality available in true digital wireless. As a matter of fact, today I am just broadcasting with a body pack in my back pocket and a boom microphone on this uh, pole right here. And they are on our very lowest power output setting. The plug-on transmitter is set at one milliwatt for this distance and my body pack is set on only two milliwatts. And at the receiver, out at the camera there, I'm actually only using the two little whip antennas. I don't have any directional antennas or anything. So um, that's, that's, I think, pretty cool. Our DWX receivers also, when it comes to reception quality, they are true double tuner diversity for each of the two channels that the little slot receiver has. So inside that one two channel receiver are four separate tuners and there's little comparator circuits between each of the two tuners for each channel. And in addition, we do some very special tricks to do the best diversity reception that we possibly can. Our new DWR S03D receiver that we're listening to now is actually brand new generation and it is unislot size. Historically, Sony, we have made receivers that slot into the back of our shoulder cams. And that kind of almost kept us out of the location sound business unless you used our buckets and things like that. But with so many accessories in the location sound business that are sized for unislot capability, it made sense for us to come out with the DWR S03D in a unislot configuration. But as a matter of fact, since unislot is 25 pin, we also have a 15 pin connector and you can just attach either of them very, very easily, depending on whether you're putting our wireless into any of our shoulder cams or our accessories or the whole world of unislot uh, kind of size accessories as well. Other DWX features worth uh, talking about uh, are that, first of all, our transmitters are remote controllable from our receivers. In other words, we pair them up with Zigbee pairing. And once a transmitter and a particular receiver channel are paired up via Zigbee, they stay paired. You can power them both down, power them both back up, and they still are paired. And you can do that, you know, a few days from now. It doesn't really matter. And under that remote control, that Zigbee pairing, we can control gain, frequency, RF power, whether you're on low, mid, or high, 15 different levels of low cut filters to deal with wind noise or factory noise or what have you. And we can even put the transmitters remotely into low power sleep mode that uses far, far less batteries. And that's great for taking a lunch break so you don't have to go in and dig into talent's clothing to turn off their body packs, for example. Now, in addition to the remote control that goes from the receiver 
out to the paired transmitters, and they can do that in a nominal distance of, you know, generally up to about 30 feet. I've seen it go farther than that. There is metadata that comes out of the transmitters that goes with the digital audio signal and it gets embedded in the digital audio signal and gets looked at from the receiver. And you can see a lot of different information, battery life and the name and what are your filters set at, uh, all sorts of pieces of metadata information. As well, since this is true digital audio, in other words, at, out at the transmitter or at the, you know, uh, in my body pack or in my plug-on transmitter, you know, once the microphone signal goes in through an analog mic pre, it then goes in through an A to D converter and we send a true digital audio bitstream. And that bitstream gets carried on regular FM frequencies, but when it hits the receiver, it's still, still digital. And then you can feed it into a, uh, you know, a digital mixer recorder. It's still digital. You can stay digital all the way through post-production and to final delivery. And that is one of the true benefits of a true digital uh, wireless path. You don't have to go through multiple A to D's and D to A's along the way and you hold on to every nuance of quality that you were able to capture from those excellent microphones at the very front of the chain. But since it is digital, there are codecs involved. Now if you know anything about Sony, you'll know that we are kind of a codec happy company. Every time we come out with a new series of cameras, we have a new codec. And uh, so uh, it's the same in audio. We, our engineers didn't just choose off-the-shelf audio codecs. We designed our own special codecs. And that is because you are constantly having to play off the amount of time you're willing to take for a codec to work uh, um, and the quality of it. So it's latency versus quality. And so our engineers have actually given you a choice of four different codecs in our wireless. Now, obviously a transmitter and the receiving channel have to be set to the same codec for them to work, but that's all handled through our Zigbee remote control as well. Now specifically, we're today on codec number three, and that offers a very short latency, but as well, it adds an extra layer of error correction, and that gets you some additional distance. In addition to that extra distance, it's also helpful in reducing burst errors and things that can happen, like from walkie-talkies on set, for example. In our Kodak uh, 2, for example, though, with our new transmitters, we're able to get our latency down to what we think is the very fastest in the industry, of just 1.2 milliseconds of latency. So that's very, very quick. Now, we have two body packs, both are new generation. One is called the DWT-B30, and the DWT-B30 runs on AA batteries. We also have the body pack that I'm currently wearing, which is the DWT-B03R, and the R stands for rechargeable. It's a smaller body pack as well. It has a Lemo-style connector on it, but what's nice about both of these body packs and our new receiver is that they are full FCC spectrum capable. There are no more blocks. The transmitters and the receivers cover the entire spectrum range of UHF uh, TV 14 or 470 all the way up through TV channel UHF 38 or 616. Of course, skipping over TV channel 37. And we can get down to 25 kilohertz tuning resolution as well. Also because of the spectrum repack that we've all been wrestling with for the last couple of years, it's important since with a reduced amount of spectrum to fit more channels into a given amount of a chunk of spectrum or a six megahertz TV channel, for example. And so we have a brand new high density mode. And that new high density mode offers up to 16 completely compatible channels within each six megahertz band. But what is nice to know is that you pay absolutely no penalty whatsoever in terms of sound quality, in terms of functionality for going into that high density mode. We're able to do this because we have inc increased the sensitivity and improved the sensitivity of our latest generation of receivers. And that means that you can fit many, many more channels obviously into a chunk of spectrum. The DWT-B03R, as I mentioned, is rechargeable. And we use little Sony CyberShot camera batteries. And they're very readily available in the marketplace. They're non-proprietary. And you can get about seven hours of battery life at the mid-power setting. 
of the transmitter. And so that's really great for everybody trying to go green and stay green on set these days. As well, the DWT-B03R body pack is IPX4 and 5 rated against moisture and perspiration and things like that. And it is very small and lightweight and it's built of magnesium. So it is very, very rugged, will hold up to the uh, abuses of on set. And it uses little OLED screens. Now, another thing that is important to know is how easy it is to operate these things. First of all, how to pair them up with the receivers. And we have shortcuts. Even though you can go into the menus, we have very easy shortcut uh, pairing. And once a transmitter is paired to a receiver channel, you can tell the receiver, go ahead and scan for the cleanest and open, most open uh, frequency that it can find at that place and time. And then once it's found it, it asks you, do you want to send that off to my paired transmitter? And you go, yes. And then in a uh, you know, uh, half second, a second, that transmitter is now set at that same frequency. As a matter of fact, we have the ability in our latest generation of receiver, the DWR-S03D, a new two-channel scanning and pairing mode, which is to say, assuming you have two different transmitters paired up, one to each of the two channels on the receiver, you can hit a shortcut button on the receiver by holding down the menu and the set button, and then the unit will take off and scan the entire FCC legal spectrum, again from UHF 14 up through 38. It'll find the two quietest channels it found in that entire range, and it will ask you if you want to send those two frequencies out to the two paired transmitters, all in one function. I thought what I would do is show you exactly how easy it is to actually set up pairing and scanning on these units. So the first thing you want to do is to make a transmitter discoverable by the receiver for that Zigbee pairing. A simple shortcut to use is to simply hold down the minus button on the transmitter and power on the transmitter. You do those two functions together and the unit will now all of a sudden say, I am scanning. I am ready to be paired. Put the transmitter down. You go over to the receiver and you actually do the exact same thing. At this point, you power on the channel you'd like on the receiver while holding down its minus button. That channel receiver will then look for any discoverable transmitters. It will then find it and it will flash you the name of that transmitter. If you actually have multiple transmitters on in that condition, you can then choose between the transmitter, but I generally do one transmitter to one receiver at a time. And then you basically hit the set button, select it, and then the two uh, devices, the receiver and the transmitter, will share information via Zigbee, and, uh, and then they're done. You are paired. Simple as that. So very easy to set up the pairing between a transmitter and a receiver. And now you simply go and you do that with the second transmitter and the second channel. Now when it comes to scanning, for example, there's also a shortcut. So you can simply take that receiver channel and power it on while holding down its plus button. The unit will then start scanning and it will find the quietest available frequency and flash it at you and say, would you like me to send that off to the paired transmitter? And you simply hit the set button and say yes. And they communicate in a half a second or so and you are done. And now you are basically good to go on the quietest frequency that it found. So it's very, very simple. You don't have to go through additional displays and other methods of pairing up units. One other thing I wanted to mention simply about our Unislot capability is since it does open us up to the whole world of location sound accessories, I found a particularly compelling um, kind of uh, cart application could be using the Audio Limited A10 rack, where you would then put in four of our true double tuner diversity uh, receivers, and that would give you eight channels of true double tuner diversity in a single rack space. And I think you will be surprised when you look at the pricing for that kind of true diversity reception system and true digital at that. In addition to the super slot capability that we currently have, just a little hint that we're working on some uh, additional uh, interface advancements that will likely take advantage of super slot capability where we'll be able to communicate more directly with some of the advanced mixer recorders on the market and just stay tuned for that if you will. 
So there's lots more to talk about, but in this, you know, kind of little video today, I hope that gives you a really good introduction, it kind of a, a, a quick view. But certainly, if you're interested in trying out any of our uh, DWX digital wireless from Sony, certainly get in touch with your favorite location sound dealer and they will arrange a demo for you. So with that, I guess I just want to thank you for spending some time with me. And uh, if, you've, if you'd like to see some additional information on the web, simply go to sony.com slash pro audio. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay socially distanced out there. Thanks, everybody.